Let's hit that, and we can start whenever now. Oh, oh, it's me. Yeah, it's you. God, this is... I, oh, this Been is weird. We haven't done this so long. Okay, <laughs> what do I say? Welcome to Popcorn Welcome to Popcorn History with the Freeborn County Historical Museum, <laughs> Library, and Village. Joining me is the giggly Risha Lilienthal, uh, curator here at the museum, and Reggie Bauer... With how do I well with the uh, up in the air a job title no um, <laughs> former uh, operations manager over at Power ninety six and now I work in radio over in Fairmont and he's our podcast man extraordinaire mm-hmm. podcast guru mm-hmm. that's what we're gonna there go we with. go. Reggie the Guru. Uh, the man with the buttons. The man ah. with the buttons. <laughs> oh, I wish we were going to talk about buttons today now. Yeah. So oh, we're going to no. change it a little bit. We talked a little bit when we do this. Initially, like, Risha will throw out an, a one-word idea, and mm-hmm. I'll counter that with another word. Mm-hmm. And so on this one, we're going to share what the words are ahead yeah. of time. So I'm going to let you start. Yeah, so I said ski suit. Snow. White. Buildings, yeah, that that's where we popped. All right, <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> so, and starting with ski suit, which is also a snow suit. I found it in collections three because that's where I love to be. Um, it's a woman's wool rust, or also kind of bright red. I thought it was more bright red than rust. A colored ski outfit. It has a fitted jacket and is lined in a yellow flannel, has two pockets on the bodice trimmed in a gold braid, two pockets on each side which zip close, and the jacket has a zipper closure and elastic on each side to make it a little bit more fitted. And there are these ski pants that are wool and fully lined also with yellow flannel. Has a two-inch waistband with two buttons and a zipper closure on the side. Um, oh, and the the two-inch waistband, it's like the two-inch like thickness. That's not the like width of the waistband. Oh. Um, what? Like a it seems like a lot. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it has two slit pockets on each side of the pants. And the ankles have this like ribbed bottom. Uh, and zipper closings to fit tighter. It looks kind of like Aladdin pants to me um, because they kind of poof out and then like skinny at the bottom. (laughs) I didn't get that from the picture. I'm just going to say. Oh, okay. Uh, Sleeves are ribbed at the bottom too. The cap, there's a cap too. That's of the same material and lined in the same yellow flannel, but it also has a um, this like fur, kind of this white faux fur lining around the edges so like it can you saw that already but it can show reggie too Ooh. maybe i can pop it on our youtube i'm a little well. disappointed i can't see the yellow flannel Aww. right yeah it's on the inside i feel like there yeah. should be a splash of yellow on the exterior also sure well you can take that up with lorraine back in or Lorraine Bakken. Bakken, probably. Bakken. See, because my mother's maiden name is Bakken. And spelled that's how the they same spelled way? Spelled the oh, same way, and that's how they say it. But I know a lot of people say Bakken. But uh, Lorraine Bakken made the snowsuit or ski suit. And in 2022 at the Freeborn County Fair, she came and was the oldest uh, Freeborn County 4-H member recognized she was 97 years old. Wow. and Yeah. Okay, wait. She was 97 years old when she made that? No. Okay. When she was recognized, recognized. All right. last year. Oh, last year. Yes. I didn't. Did you oh, say that I did. already? I said 2022. Oh, you did. Okay. I did. Sorry, it's uh, been a really long, <laughs> long day, day and I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> um, she, when she first moved into the um, neighborhood and got into this club that was kind of this close-knit friends in the neighborhood club where you had to be a part of um, one of, I think, eight. Let me consult my notes here. One of the, oh goodness, where did it go? One of the yep eight original farmhouses in a certain area in Albert Lee. If you were in one of those, then you could be a part of this like kind of sewing club. That um, it started out as one of the women in like 1918, I believe. Very exclusive. Yes, it's very right? exclusive. 1918. One of them had like the others come to her house with sewing machines, and they would sew clothes for the Red Cross. 
Huh. And then if somebody moves into one of those houses, then one of these people go and visit them and like, you know, see if they want to be a part of this club. But you have to be in one of those houses. That's interesting because, you know, if you're sewing for the Red Cross, wouldn't you think the more people you could include, the better sure. you would? The more the merrier. Yeah. Right. But. If you move into one of those eight original farmhouses, somebody talks to you is a quote that's about the Friendly Neighbors Club. It turned into 11 members, originally, yep, formed in 1918. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you betcha. Don't you know? Yeah, so that was one that Lorraine Bakken, and from my knowledge, she is still alive. Um. But we have a snowsuit from her that she sewed herself. And it was really, it is really well made. It took me a minute to realize it was handmade. Sure. Because it, it's really, really nice. My mom was a seamstress and you wouldn't have been able oh, to tell yeah. that her things were hmm. sewn at that. home. Um, so tell me again, what year did she get recognized at the fair? 2022. So just last yeah. year. Mm-hmm. She said she hadn't been to the fair in a while, but because she was being recognized, you know, she came oh, out. fine. Yeah. Well, might as well. Right. <laughs> um, it's really too bad we didn't know in advance because, yeah. gosh, we could have pulled that out. Yeah, that's true. That would have been so fun. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> but that was snow learn. suit or ski suit. That's what I was thinking I love about. It. Yeah. Well, of course, when you said ski suit, mm-hmm. my brain just glommed on to snow. <laughs> right. Because what I guess I could have gone water skiing. I could have gone you water. You could have. Uh-huh. I went snow. Um, it's the season. It is. Yeah. <laughs> this is the year of snowstorms oh, too. Really? I um, can't. Um, I can't believe how many snowstorms we've had. I have an echo. <laughs> I think it's in my head, actually, and not the <laughs> headphones. I'm just saying. Oh, I was like, I think you're hearing the same thing that <laughs> Risha and I are hearing. So <laughs> that sorry, was a funny face. Any, she just anyway, like, what just happened? What's going wrong? <laughs> and I'm going to say this is the first time we're using our new equipment. Yeah. Because we did set a media studio up in the uh, museum office. with grant funds that we received. And so this is our first round out and, and headphones on both ears with the slight head cold. I was Aww. echoing. Yeah. Well, you're not inside the Power 96 studio. No. I think we might get the cops called if I just showed Ooh. up and started. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> could be fun. <laughs> I could bail you out. <laughs> so snow, in 1877, when Albert Lee had the first snowfall of the season, the, el- the editor wrote, the merry ringing of sleigh bells breaks the somewhat monotonous rumble of wagons over the frozen ground and snow. And I got to thinking, oh, can you imagine being... Here in 1877, and all you heard were those wagons going over. Oh, gosh. So we have road construction in front of us right now. And yeah. I'm thinking the roads then would be similar to this. They wouldn't have been paved. It and would have been dirt. Been cobblestoned yet. Either. No. So it would have been full of ruts, and it would probably be clear, just noisy. Ew. So the sleigh bells were probably lovely. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. Well, okay. You know, I never thought about like sleigh bells actually making noise except for like in like the wind, but roads weren't even. Well, even like if you have them atta- on a horse, you yeah. get a wagon now that you get the sleigh bells jingle. Right. Hello, do you not listen to Christmas songs? <laughs> well, jingle yes, bells. Yes, but I've never seen them on like an actual oh, horse. Oh, haven't you? Oh, I have no. a mission. <laughs> a mission in my life. Um, so I have a bunch of funny little tidbits, really, Yee. on snow. In 1874, in February, a young man was frozen to death near Albert Lee. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> when intoxicated, and a coroner's jury declared the saloon keeper who sold him the liquor was responsible. Really? Mm-hmm. So yeah. So that was, like, shortly either before or during, like, when the temperance push was going on around yes. here wasn't right it? Before, before wasn't it yep. yeah yeah we mentioned that in a cocktail history yeah. yeah that was just before those laws came i out. thought that was yeah. yes i thought oh um oh shoot that's the next round stay tuned folks <laughs> <laughs> and so i got focused on snowstorms 
Because we've had so many snowstorms, other than the jingle bells and the frozen drunk man. <laughs> oh. um, in 1877, um, back to when the sleigh bells were ringing, mm-hmm. a severe snowstorm raged for several days near the last of April. Oh, Ooh. goodness. Uh, Knock on wood. Right? Uh, Something. Yes. Well, I don't know if we have any wood. Um and the prediction was universal that it was a distressing time for the infantile hoppers who were just worming into life and who came to an untimely end by the million. Goodness. I'll explain hoppers in the next edition oh. of Popcorn like History. Like grasshopper hoppers? Shh. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> don't I don't spoil know. It. <laughs> Man. <laughs> just raining on my parade here. At least I'm not snowing on it. There you go. Um, and I thought this was kind of funny. I, I'm not sure who Albert Lee Tommy is, but I think hmm. it's a Comcat character that was in the newspaper back in 1933. Yes, said Albert Lee Tommy, knocking the snow out of his ears this morning. We think we are very modern and all that, but it takes a good blizzard like the one Saturday night and yesterday to show us that all our fine inventions are nothing much after all. How many horse laughs echoed round the town yesterday morning when the milkmen meekly petitioned old Dobbin to come on and help deliver the milk? I bet quite a few. <laughs> and I bet... The old engineer on number 9090 grinned a mean grin when he trundled his faithful iron steed into the station yesterday morning practically on time and noted that the snow-filled highways were quite innocent of buses and trucks. <laughs> yes, it does seem that we're quite in a that we're wait, yes it does seem that fate takes a hand once in a while to take us down a peg or two. We mustn't glide along too smoothly in this old world. We must have a depression extra long and extra tough to teach us that even if we are quite belligerently politically inclined normally, we are all brothers and sisters outside the voting booth and can pull together very nicely if the need arises. All right. (laughs) I thought, thought, okay, this is interesting because it's coming from Albert Lee Tommy, which it appears is the Tomcat, right? Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of this... Crudely drawn. I think back to the old Mickey Mouse. Yes. Yeah. What's that, the guy? Like the Steamboat Willie. Yes. That seems to be the, kind of the draw, the what's type of drawing. The, oh gosh. No. What's the bad guy that's always against Goofy? Uh, the Pete. Oh, yes. Oh, the he's yes, mean. He looks like that, Pete, that's what he looks the like. Pete. Yes. And I yeah. thought it was funny. The cat was talking about the snow and then took a political turn. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do By have the a way. question about the beginning of that though. What's a horse laugh? I mean, I guess a whinny. When a horse whinnies, when a horse neighs, oh, okay. I'm assuming they mean it's a horse laugh. Okay. Yeah. But it, so this, this particular storm was um, one of the heaviest snowstorms in years for Albert Lee. And there's a whole um, article in the, in the Albert Lee Tribune um, and some of the subtitles in it, bus service, clearing business section. Tough night tries his skills. Pheasants suffer. Uh-uh. Doctor Head says so. Interstate suffers, <laughs> and it talks Everyone about suffers. the impact of uh, the snow on all of these different aspects of the community. Goodness, uh, which I think it'd be really fun to write an article like that based on one of our storms. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have a specific date for this snowstorm? I know you said nineteen thirty-three. Ah. Uh, it must be around March eighteenth, nineteenth. Okay, right in there. It doesn't give an exact date, mm. um, but Albert Lee Tommy is talking about it on March twentieth. Okay, so I would guess sometime five days in the five days preceding that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. somewhere yeah. in that range. What is that face for? Well, we're in early March. I know. Just <laughs> it just seems. We've had snow as late as mid-May here. Oh, I yes. Like I don't like that. Yeah. When I, I was in high school, back up in Hastings, we had a snow day on like May 3rd, one of those years. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't like that either. Um, and then just to close with this funny little tidbit, apparently the most celebrated man in the world was here in 1913. Oh. 
Captain Roald Amundsen, famous Norwegian explorer, delivered a lecture at the Broadway Theater on how he discovered the North Pole. I was going to say that name sounded familiar, uh, but I wasn't sure. I did like a look <laughs> like, wait a minute, who is that? I should know this. <laughs> the talk was illustrated with motion pictures and stereopticon views. Did I say that right? Yeah. Stereopticon? I think so. That's tickets, how it looks. tickets were anywhere from fifty cents to a dollar fifty. Oh, big you, bucks! That is big bucks back in back in the day. Yeah, I suppose yeah. in nineteen thirteen. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I I did not know anything about him being the most famous man in the world. Celebrated, most oh, celebrated okay. man that he discovered the South Pole. <laughs> well, okay. So you said snow, and I was a little like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? And I said white. You sure did. I, did. I was like, fine, you're going to be vague. I'm going to be vaguer. <laughs> uh, and so originally I was actually thinking about um, Maggie Lambert's paintings oh. that we have because the way she does white is just beautiful. I And I you're sitting in my it. office looking at these paintings. Yes. I didn't even catch it. Ugh. But I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Captain A. White. A.W. White. Mm. He, in the summer of 1861, uh, people in Freeborn County began to realize that we needed to raise a company for the war going down in the South. Yeah, there's something, something uh, just something, started something up a few happening. months ago if you heard about it. Hmm. <laughs> 1861, what could have been? Uh, and so, accordingly, at Albert Lee, they gathered people they had rousing speeches and songs were sung and a company was raised and this company was uh f of the fourth minnesota volunteer infantry at fort snelling and a w white was the captain of our first company sent into the civil war and in 1862 uh they raised another company and that was Timothy Sheehan and Frank Phobes, who were members of Captain White's company. They came back to enlist more people for the second one. And then there was a third one that came with uh, Frank Hall as captain, who, uh, if you've heard us talk about hotels in the past, he was one who was a big hotel owner in this area. Mm. And... Um, so, yeah, they raised two more companies after Captain White was the captain of the first one. And how A.W. White came to Albert Lee in Freeborn County was because of George S. Rubel. So in 1855, oh, I recognize that name. Mm-hmm. Right? 1855, 1855-1856 time period, he went over to uh, visit Captain White in Wisconsin And he met him at a Masonic convention, and he tried to persuade Captain White to locate in Freeborn County. And he suggested that a Masonic lodge could be started. So, in March 1856, Captain White came to Freeborn County and located himself in Pickerel Lake. So, did he start the Masonic lodge? He did. Ooh. Were you getting to that? Yes. <laughs> it's just on pins and needles here. Right. He was the first worshipful master of the lodge. The, I I just, I'm sorry. Say that again? He was the first worshipful master of the lodge. Just feel it go right up my spine. <laughs> <laughs> and he remained one of its members until his death in 1907. But he lived in Pickerel Township until... 1861 when he you know went and became captain and fought in the civil war he participated in several battles like corinth and vicksburg Mm. and um had uh, several notable engagements in 1863 he fell ill health he got sick uh and compelled to resign and returned home and then until 1872 he was in the mercantile business yeah, in the area. He was also clerk of the district court, served two terms. He was justice of the peace, a city ambassador, and again, a charter member of the Western Lodge number 28. Oh, 26. I'm sorry. <laughs> number 26, which is the one here in Albert Lee. 
from 1895 until his death. He lived on, quote, his fine farm on the west shore Aww. of Lake Albert Lee. Aww. A fine yeah. farm. And he um, spent a lot of time with his daughter. He did have three children, but his daughter was apparently like one of his favorites. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not supposed to have favorites. I uh, know. <laughs> every parent has favorites. <laughs> oh. Every parent has favorites. I'm just saying. Um, upon his death, the newspapers uh, said of him, quote, Captain White has been identified for half a century with the history and affairs of this community. And as a citizen, soldier, and official in all walks of life, he bore an honorable part and possessed the universal esteem of his fellow men. He was a man of staunch convictions and of integrity, and his life work and his record will ever be cherished as a memory to his family and notable in the annals of Freeborn County. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Isn't that nice? I uh, yeah. was, as you were talking, you said rousing speeches. Yes. <laughs> and I think, you know, with our environment right now, the last few years especially, <laughs> as we're talking about rousing speeches and we're kind of affectionately referring to them, right? Right. Because yeah. they're part of history. Right. But when we hear rousing speeches now, in this day, we don't think of them that way. But down the road, a yeah, right. hundred years from now, some politicians are going to have been known to give rousing speeches. Sure. Right. Meanwhile, right now, we're all sitting around here like, golly gee, I sure do love living through history. <laughs> Pretty much, right? <laughs> love it so much. Uh. I just, that, that just caught, I don't know, that caught me. Yeah. So, you said white. I did. I went to buildings. Yeah. Because the minute you said white, I thought, why are all our buildings white? <laughs> Does it have to do with like what? limestone? What? Oh, sorry. Oh. God. Oh. Everybody's done. Okay, spoiling show's each other. done. Oh, no. We can go home now. Roll That's all, credits. Folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Roll the credits. Um, it has to do with lime paint. Oh. Uh, see, that's different. Half credit. Oh. Um, <laughs> So it says, just as barns are known for being red, farmhouses always seem to be painted white. And that seemed to be true for a lot of the buildings back in the early 1900s, right? When they started to paint. Well, the whitewash, also known as lime paint, was used to prevent mildew from forming on both the inside and outside of the houses. Fascinating, though, right? I thought, gee... So the main ingredient, lime, worked as a disinfectant, odor disguiser, and insect repellent, Hmm. and was used all over farms for different purposes. Is that why we have so much lime scale in our water? Like from our water? I don't know. Huh. Do we have a lot of lime scale? In this area, I think so. Um, Well, could that have to do with, um, we sit on, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, Albert Lee would be part of that. We sit on some of the best water in the state in Steele County and yeah. Fremont County huh. from the um, Ice Age. Right. I know we do have a lot of copper, though. I don't know if that has anything. I to don't do know. With it. I don't know. Gentle listener, if you have an idea, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night. Gentle listener. <laughs> Um, it especially came in handy for, again, preventing mildew from growing on homes um, located in, especially in hot and humid or hot and moist, hot and moist Ugh. regions. Ick. The liquid's mild antibacterial properties also made it a popular choice for dairy farms. Oh. And so this goes on to say that the um, Mark Twain's title character, Tom Sawyer, who was assigned to whitewash the family... That Fence. was where I recognized the word right. from. Um, although fictional, the scene wasn't unrealistic. The material was so easy to work with that even a youngster would have been trusted with it. So hmm. they would have let kids paint that. What was he supposed to do? Paint the fence. Whitewash, Whitewash the fence. Whitewash the fence. Oh. Don't you remember that in the book? I he never had, read the oh. book. Oh, I'm really? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't read books and I even... I thought every that kid had read no. Tom Sawyer. Hmm. It's actually... it's it's You should read it. Oh, okay. Uh, you might not like all of it, but it's... Sure. Uh, it has its parts. 
The simple and pretty look of the light hue may also explain why it became a popular choice. White houses were often a sign of cleanliness oh. and purity. Of Imagine course. that. Um, mm-hmm. So um, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. That's where white buildings come from. So we're protecting our historic village with our white paint, uh-huh. <laughs> preventing mildew. Yes. Cleanliness is being... Next to godliness. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but oh, I suppose okay. with purity. Purity, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Protect the popcorn. Uh, protect the popcorn. Yes. Which is also white. Ah. <laughs>